All right, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Encompass Live is the Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast a show live every Wednesday morning at 10 a.m. Central Time. But if, you, if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we are doing today and is then posted to our um, website for our archives. And I will show you at the end of today's show where we have those archives for you. Both the live show and the recordings are free and open to anyone to, for anyone to watch. So please do share, spread the news uh, to anyone you think may be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, the Nebraska Library Commission is a state agency for libraries in Nebraska. So we provide services um, to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find um, shows on um, Encompass Live for all types of libraries, uh, public, academic, K-12, schools, museums, corrections, archives, et cetera, et cetera. Et cetera. Uh, our only real criteria is something to do with libraries. Sometimes we do uh, Libraries have libraries come on and talk about cool things they're doing in their libraries. Uh, we share resources and services here for the Library Commission, um, bring in guest speakers, all sorts of things. Uh, but the last Wednesday of every month is Pretty Sweet Tech Day. Yay! Um, that is when Amanda Sweet, who's with us here today. Good morning, Amanda. Good morning. She is our technology innovation librarian here at the Nebraska Library Commission, and she comes on and does some. Uh, tech related presentations. Uh, so if you are the tech person for your library or interested in that kind of thing, this is definitely the shows to um, keep up on that last Wednesday of the month. And today she's going to talk to us about a great new service we're offering here through the Library Commission. Took a while to get it all up and running and piloted and tested and, and, it, and but we are ready to uh, start doing tech kits through the mail. So I will hand it over to you and to take it away and tell us all about it. So it is exactly what it sounds like. We send <laughs> it through the mail. <laughs> and so I'll cut, in this session, I'll kind of talk about what's available right now, what I have upcoming, because I just got a touch more funding to add a few more things. So I'm adding a few more bits and bobs and features. And then I'll talk about some different activities that you can do, some different partnership models that libraries have been using so far so that you can kind of get some ideas of what you might want to try. And then I've also expanded to include more education and classroom resources because a lot of public libraries are partnering with schools. A lot of school libraries wanted to bring stuff into their own library. And apparently a lot of libraries are starting to partner with um, code schools, like code.org, like AIM Code School, and different organizations like that. And those organizations tend to want larger quantities. So that is what I'm working on. And then I'm going to talk about some, like once you've done the activities with the tech kits, I'll talk about some different ways that you can start digging deeper into these tools and figure out some other stuff that you might want to try. All right, so in the slideshow, I put in the new kits that I've added that I haven't gotten a chance to add to the full website. And once I run through those, I'll shift you over to the regular website so you know where things are going to live from here on out. I'll mention too, since you mentioned the slides and we're showing them, um, the slides will be available afterwards um, along with the recording too. So if you ever, if anyone wants to refer back to them, you'll have access to those. Perfect. All right, so, and then just as a side note, I will be adding a few software subscriptions because it's coming out of, it's not coming out of ARPA funding, it's coming out of LSTA funding. So I'll be able to give you some access to some of the software subscriptions. Unfortunately for now, it'll only be for a year, then we'll see, but it's better a year than nothing. Mm -hmm. so, and it's also going to help to find out if anyone gets some good use out of it. And if people get good use out of it, we'll have better reason to see if we need it again next year. Sure, get your stats. Right? <laughs> good old stats. 
So the first one that I'll talk about is the Sphero Bolt. So this is the newest version of Sphero. So if you've used um, Sphero Mini or one of the previous versions of Sphero, this one has added this cool little LED light board. It has some new features and some new sensors. And I've also added the terrain accessory, which will give like a little jump ramp and it'll also let you kind of skid some rails in case your kids like skateboarding. And there's also a chariot. So a chariot's going to turn this little dude into like a little tow station. So you can use Legos to kind of attach like a little tow ramp to him. And you can also add in like a little marker accessory or do some fun stuff with him. And so there is a library of lesson activities that are available for Sphero. Um, Sphero has like a cult following, so they there are people that have made their own lesson plans and added them in for free. And there's also a lesson library that's included with the um, Made by Sphero Education. And so that is actually a subscription that I am looking at starting shortly. And so the next one on my list is the Finch Robot. So the Finch robot is made by a company called Bird Brain Technologies. And by the way, I love the name Bird Brain Technologies. <laughs> it's just kind of awesome. Mm -hmm. So most of Bird Brain stuff, it actually works with this Microbit chip. And Microbit is made by Microsoft. So you know that it has plenty of tech support and it has plenty of different activities and activities and lesson plans. But Bird Brain Technologies has also made their own lesson library. And they've also been adopted by a bunch of schools and organizations across the, well, pretty much across the nation. So they've already vetted out all these activities, tested them, battle tested them, and they are good to go. And they're also, they've added this new feature with this new robot that you can use dry erase markers to kind of draw on its surface and then just kind of wipe them clean when you're done. Oh. And so customizing it or decorating it and from what i've heard like in the previous model kids were trying to draw on the old one so when bird brain found out about it they're like you know let them and they, <laughs> you know. and so this one is great for ages five and up and but they have lesson plans for all the way up through high school like k through 12. And so this is kind of a good introduction to robotics and circuitry. And the plus sign is that you don't actually have to build them like some other different robotics kits. So you can use it in like a single lesson plan instead of having to do two sessions, like the first session build them, then the second session code them. So this one you can focus straight in on just kind of the step-by-step -step coding or going rogue and figuring out something fun to do yourself. And so this Hummingbird Bit Premium is also made by Bird Brain Technologies. So I put them side by side on the list here. I see so, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so if you have tried out Arduino or Raspberry Pi or one of those activity kits and were kind of overwhelmed by it and just didn't know what to do with it, this is kind of a circuit alternative that's got what like better introductory guides and everything you need is actually included with the kit which is not always true with arduino and raspberry pi because most of those activities were made just by random people who put them together and even some of the arduino kits uh, like arduino made activities they use some extra added on features that aren't always included so this is just kind of like a more controlled environment that has the step-by-step -step that actually does legitimately have everything included in the kit. And this is the premium kit so that it has more pieces than the non-premium kit. The, and so this one also works with the micro bit. And so it has the extended activity options that you can use if you so wanted to. And so the block-based coding is really good for the beginners because it's kind of like that drag and drop interface that just says move motor one rotation or it's like kind of like that English-based just say what you mean and it does it. Right. And, then, yeah. and then the text code would be like your Python and JavaScript and like your 
what you would traditionally think of when you think of coding. So it's just like the words on the screen and mm -hmm. so, but you can also pull them up side by side so you can see what this block would look like in code. And that is one of the best ways to transition over from block based to text. And there are a few other different kits in this in the tech kits of the mail that have this option. But this is a great one if Raspberry Pi made you want to bang your forehead against a window. <laughs> Sometimes they do create those and you just assume, well, you're going to know. Oh, you, yeah. you get code, right? That's why you've gotten this device. Not always. <laughs> right? Yeah. And, and so that is that basic, the basic you know, introduction is going to really grab, grab a lot more people. Right. I'll think that way, yeah. And then we've got the, so taking kind of a right turn from circuits, we're going into the DJI Tello drone. So this little guy is actually made for education, but there's also another version of him that is just the DJI Tello drone. So this one will actually work with the apps for both of them. So it'll work with the education apps and the regular um DJI Tello app. So if you Google them and start looking it up, you can use both of them. But this one actually uses a coding system called Drone Blocks. And Drone Blocks is it's another one of those drag and drop coding systems. So it's just like it has a list of the blocks that are available. You drag one over, connect it into a little program, and you'll be able to say fly forward, turn right make a u-turn and it just has all those plainly labeled blocks that you can tell it what to do and it also this kit that i got also includes the mission mats so it has lesson plans that actually use these little mats to get you to go through obstacles and activities and start landing on different colored dots and find out how the drone can um, register different objects and symbols and things like that and then it'll also translate into this is how drones are used in agriculture. This is how drones are used in construction. Real and you'll application. <laughs> so and get, right. <laughs> and so this one has um, there's also the library of activities that are included with this. And in order to extend those activities, since the drone block subscription was really reasonably priced. I decided to experiment with that one too. Mm -hmm. um, and again, those software subscriptions won't be available until November 1st. But if even if you do order one of these today, it won't get in the mail to you until probably around that time. That's just so cool. Question. Yeah. Now, and that um, someone has that I'll grab right now after if that's okay. Yeah, go for and it. And it might be a question to, to get out right now before getting to more of the kids. Um, Generally, how many participants would you recommend per kit? Do the lesson or the, do the lessons plan explain how many participants the kit, the a, a particular set or kit can support at one time? So the general rule of thumb is to have two participants per kit. Um, if you have more advanced level students, you can do one participant per kit. The recommendation of two is just so that they can work together to troubleshoot and kind of work things out. And it also kind of extends the number of kits that you can use. So if you have like a class of 30 students, you would only need 15 kits to go across. And incidentally, there would be actually be a maximum of 15 copies of each of these available. And so and so some of them are available right now. Some of them are still on order because that is actually one of the things. Yeah. Okay. So this one on my shelf right now, I currently have six of them and the remaining nine of them are somewhere in the mail. Ask UPS. Yeah. Everyone knows what the mail, how the mail is doing right now. It's very yeah. interesting. <laughs> yeah. So, so, um, so you're when you, so are you going to get into later about how to order the kits and how that all works? The circulating. Open? Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Cool. Sorry about that right now then. Yeah. And I'll go over like the policies, how long you can keep them checked out, like safety and policies and different stuff like that. And how actually, well, oh. how many? Yeah. Yeah. Cool. 
And so while I'm on that note, I actually got this kit and I'm sure they designed it this way just because it has these little safety guards for the propellers. Um, I do also, I have a Holy Stone drone that didn't originally come with these little guards. And I know from experience that these guards are nice to have, but I did heal. So oh. there's, you know. Um, true. Yeah. <laughs> I don't know it's like even with the holy stone drone it's kind of you kind of use common sense to know where and where not to put your hand it was just like a weird stroke of luck that um i had accidentally crashed the drone into a bush and i thought that the propellers had stopped but apparently they hadn't um, so even after your drone has crashed which probably will happen at least once or twice <laughs> Don't grab it right from the side. <laughs> and so that's kind of one of those um, safety policies that I added in about that. And it just kind of, they're an awesome thing to start playing with, but it's just a few things to keep in mind to stay safe, especially when you have younger kids that are working with it. And there's also a guide for if you have extremely young kids, you'd actually want to start with just either a demonstration or have an adult present with each different group or subgroup. So it's kind of, you know, your kids and you know that like how well they can follow directions. So if you have a generally known group of unruly kids, monitor them more. And if you have a general group of kids that are, you know that they are just really good and that they're gonna follow the directions relatively well you're good to go all right so I'll jump over into the next one which is actually for adults and older students because this is recommended for ages 13 and up and this is actually a safety policy that was put together not by me but by oculus themselves and it's because they've already done the testing with this and they found out that if you are younger than 13 years old, sometimes your eyes are still kind of growing and adjusting and it can kind of mess with your vision after you've taken it off or kind of, and they don't know how it impacts vision in, in kids that still have their eyes forming and they're still growing in that way. So, just because of what they the information they have available right now they recommend 13 and up and so that's why just for liability reasons in the library we're going to follow the safety regulations from the experts and so we put in a so i had to put in a waiver that people would sign before they use this because there's also the risk of disorientation like i've used virtual reality a lot and i've worn these headsets a lot the only time I personally have had a problem is when I tried to go on a virtual roller coaster. But oh. I mean, yeah. <laughs> but honestly, that might have happened in real life too. I mean, who knows? Sure, sure. Yeah. Uh, I know, yeah, a lot of people do have trouble with this um, VR, and that's something you have to be aware of that people may be very excited if they've never done it before, and suddenly they put it on and it does not go well. Yeah, and there have also been instances of like nausea or different things like that. So just keep a chair on standby so that they can, people can remain seated or just take a seat if they are feeling disoriented or uncomfortable in any way. And just give the disclaimer that it is okay to just pull the headset off if you're just putting it on and going, nope. So it's kind of keep with your comfort level. And so that's actually why we include that waiver and, and other libraries actually use that. I adapted it from other libraries. So it's kind of based on what people have already run into. So that is actually available on the TechKit website. You'll get the link of it at the end, but if you go to the Library Commission website and search Tech Kits, the link will pop up. And so then I'll flip over to the Dash and Dot Wonder Pack, which is another robot set that I've added in here. This is one that most libraries have either heard about or are already using. 
So I got the Wonder Pack that has all the extra added on accessories because some libraries have the robot itself, but they don't have any of the little attachments or bobs and bits. So this is kind of like a good extension activity to do. This one uses um, block-based code and it also has another, and I've been, I'm including the curriculum guides with it and the curriculum resources. So this is actually something that is still on order right now because it was on back order when I ordered it. Apparently it's a popular thing to have. Yeah. And so this is coming when it's coming. And I'm told that it might actually be included in a digital format instead of printed. So we'll see how that goes. I might wind up just printing it and including it with the kit. We'll see. And so these are actually geared toward different age ranges. This little dot access, this little dot robot mm -hmm. is geared toward five and up. He kind of just chills there and you can code him to change different colors, but there's not, this one doesn't have any movement included. And these ears are just decorative. They're actually little attachment ears that can be put on either robot, mm -hmm. but these don't move. They're just kind of cute. Mm -hmm. And this one has is for ages eight and up, so he'll actually move around, or she, I didn't ask. And so this robot will actually move around. There's a little launcher attachment with three little balls included that you can kind of aim at different targets. These are some different stacking targets that you can use to aim your launcher or navigate around in an obstacle course. These are some little brick attachments that can get attached onto the side here. And it does work with certain different Lego kits to add in different little constructions or projects or things like that. Oh, and cool. there are. Yeah, it looks like it's got the same. Little and this. Holes and things, yeah. And this is the bulldozer attachment. So you can actually use this to pretty much put together, you can either set up bowling pins or you can set up um, confetti or you can set up little, if you have any of those little packing peanuts, you can also ask, get the robot to corral and clean up the packing peanuts. And this is a tow hook. So this gets popped onto the back end of the robot and you can attach little, you can attach like a little cart onto them or you can attach like a little tow station or just kind of pull things around. So that's just kind of like a fun attachment that also has some lesson plans that are included with it. And so this one also has the lesson library that's available online. The lesson library for any uh, Make Wonder robots is called Class Connect. And Dash and Dot also has a series of apps that are available. So there is a Dash playground and there's also a an app that's specifically made for the xylophone and mm -hmm. then there is a so this is like the little xylof the little attachment you would use to hit the xylophone and there are pre-made songs and you can also make your own songs using the xylophone which is just kind of awesome <laughs> and then we'll go into so the queue is the next stage up from make from the dash and dot. So it has the similar model, but this one has a blaster. <laughs> and so this one, yeah. And sorry if I talk over you a couple times. I think your volume might be a touch muted. But. Uh, oh, that's okay. Um. And so the blaster I have now, so if you order this now, the blaster will come with it, but the gripper is actually still on order right now. And the gripper is basically, it kind of looks like a connect set. So it's kind of, it's got the it's instructions. So you actually have to build the gripper itself. And so I'll actually pull up Q robot gripper. So this is actually something that you put together yourself. So you can do one activity that's just putting this together and then another that's learning how to code it. 
So you can use this gripper, but if you're running short on time or you only have time for one session, you might want to focus on coding the robot instead of building it, or you might want to focus on just building this and then maybe doing like one or two little movements with it. So it's up to you what you want to do with it. And I will close this out again. And that gripper attachment also has four lesson plans included with it. So there'll be a little activity cards that you can use with that gripper. And there are also activity cards and target cards that come with this um, blaster. And so let me go into the So that is the last kit that I've added so far. Now I'm going to jump over into the main tech kit pages and we'll go over some of the remaining kits that are available that already have the resources on the page. And I'll go over some of the tech kit policies and things you need to know. And while I'm switching over, did any other questions pop in? Um, no, I don't see anybody. If anybody, <clears throat> excuse me, does have any questions about any of the kits or what's available or what you can do with them, um, go ahead and type into the question section. Um, and as um, Amanda message, mentioned earlier, she will get into how everything gets circulated. But um, nothing came in um, since that first one that I mentioned. All right. So I'll go over the remaining kits and kind of what you can do with them so far, and. I'm also adding in, so for this merge cube, this is an augmented reality cube. So you can hold a device in front of this cube and it will digitally transform into different objects. And you can also create your own little merge cube world. And that is actually one thing that I'm adding soon is an app called CoSpaces. So CoSpaces uses like a little drag and drop system to be able to you can build like a little town on here. You can build um, different rooms. You can add in furniture. You can basically turn this into your own thing. And you can also use it to create different lesson plans or environments. And you can also make your own 3D objects in a system called Tinkercad. And Tinkercad is a free 3D design software. You may have used it or heard about it before, but you can design in and I'll actually bring that up here. And you can design in Tinkercad and then pull your design into the CoSpaces app and then pop it onto the cube. So you can kind of take full control over what you're designing and what you're making. And this is actually designed for beginners and or younger users. So adults have gotten some great use out of it. Kids have gotten great use out of it. And this is just kind of a both Tinkercad and this augmented reality cube are a great introduction to how you can use this in different industries too. So if you want to find out how this technology works and then how you might want to start building a scavenger hunt in your library or how you might want to start using um, there are different warehouses and different training facilities that have put up little symbols and markers all over the warehouse so that when you see that symbol or you see that marker, you can hold up your phone and you can trigger different um, information bits or you can trigger a video to pop up or you can trigger a like a training course to pop up. So it's kind of and you can also use augmented reality to label different objects in like a car engine or label different objects in a 3D printer. That's actually what I'm experimenting with right now is using yeah. augmented reality to label the like a 3D printer or label like the parts of a robotic set. So hold up your phone and it gets up little labels that show what each little bit and bob is so that it's just less confusing when you're learning how to do it. Yeah, it's great for training and education, absolutely. Right. So it's kind of, and that's one of those extended activities that you can start to do. So you can use this with K through 12, but you can also use it with adults. And say, if you want a great introduction to how augmented reality works, 
Here's a video of how augmented reality is being used in a training facility or in a warehouse or in a insert setting here. And then you can say, if you want to learn how to make it yourself, this is how, this is like your introductory experience. And you can start building your little town or building a, or like triggering different activities. And then say, now try it out in the world, in the wild or warehouse, whatever it may be. <clears throat> and so that's why. There's a comment that just came in, and um, this is uh, Jessica Norfolk. Uh, this is not a question, but man, this is so cool. Can't wait to get started. <laughs> yeah. I love it. <laughs> yeah. And that's why I also included in each one of these sections, there'll be a, a real world problem section. So it'll be showing what this, which kind of technology this is actually demonstrating. And you can click through here for different examples of how it's actually being used out in the world. So then these are real use cases. So when parents or when kids say, I mean, cool, I'm learning this, but um, what am I going to do with it? Why? <laughs> right? Yeah. So, yeah. And so this is like all of your answers to the wonderful world of why. And so you, this is just, and this is just a fun thing to just kind of read through and kind of sift through. You can even bring people together and just start um, looking at a practical problem out in the world and start Googling. And when you start Googling, pick what you're interested in, then grab a tech kit and figure out what you might want to experiment with. And each one of these kits will also have a set of activities and resources, resources that you can use with each different kit. And so it'll send you over to the activity plans that are made by the organization itself first, and then it'll, it'll branch off into lesson plans that were made just by enthusiasts or educators or just different people who like the kit. Then you can go rogue and make your own. <laughs> and so let me go back here. So this is the drone that got me good. And so let me click this one open. So, and honestly, if I hadn't actually picked it up in the wrong way to begin with, I wouldn't have had that problem. So that was kind of my bad. But this one actually has arms that fold in. So it's easier to put it into a little case and transport it. And this one also comes with a remote control that you can put your uh, cell phone in so that you can actually see a visual of what the drone is seeing. And you can also take photos and videos using the drone. And so I've actually, I've gotten like rooftop photos of like a friend's apartment building and I've gotten like um, park wide photos and then you can also start learning about FAA regulations and you can start using this to um, survey construction sites and you can start using it to um, survey um, crop sites or fields or anything like that. Mm -hmm. And there's also the real world problems in here so you can see how and where drones are being used out in the wild. And I should also mention that these kits, and I'll go back into the home section. So I'll go open this Q Robotics kit. And if you open up the get started section on any one of these kits, there is a librarian preparation guide and an introductory lesson plan. So if you are not familiar or comfortable with using a lot of these kits, you can start with this introductory lesson plans that uses the skills you would learn in the librarian preparation guide. So this librarian preparation guide will kind of go through the basics of what's in the kit. And it'll also give you a basically like a skills checklist that says learn this stuff before you so you can get comfortable with leading or facilitating a session in the library. And if you are partnering with like a local code school, like AIM Code School or another organization like that, you might not need to 
know the ins and out of how to use every little bit and bob of the kit, but it does help to have like an introductory understanding of everything so that you can answer questions or refer people to different resources. So you can know the different ways that you can start coding this and the different apps that are recommended and just start using this as a starting point. Mm -hmm. So this will just help you gain familiarity and get started with it. And I'm still building out some of these guides for, and the libraries that have checked these out before, uh, they told me that they actually just printed out the preparation guide and printed out their preferred lesson plan and then went from there. So whether you want to see it online or you want to print it, that is up to you. If enough people start printing it, I might just print it and include it, but we'll see. So let me go back in here. So, and one thing I should note on here is that, and something that I should actually add into the site, this Ozobot robot is actually the Ozobot bit, not the Ozobot Evo, because I bought it before the Evo was a thing. Hmm. And so there will be like a special thing that you'd want to do to start finding lesson plans that are specifically for the bit. And it's mainly going into their um, lesson library and sorting either by date or by, usually by date. If you sort by date, you'll actually get the slightly older lesson plans first, and then you'll get the ones that can be used for both BIT and EVO. And then finally, the ones that were designed specifically for EVO will usually land at the bottom. And for the most part, if there's a lesson plan that's made for Evo, you can usually adapt it or use it for both. But if you want to get something specifically for the bit, you'd actually want to go into their lesson library and sort it. And they are using Ozoblockly. And Ozoblockly is another one of those drag and drop coding systems that, and they use something called um, flash loading. So you would pull up the, the only reason I'm not pulling it up right now is because I'm not 100% sure I'm going to remember my password to get into it right now. That's such a common <laughs> problem we have with everything nowadays. Right. <laughs> so let me see if it'll just let me open it. Okay, so let me go into devices. Oh, it's not going to let me. Oh, maybe it actually automatically logged me in. That's handy. So let me go into the dashboard, go into Blockly, and then you'll want to choose the bit in this upper corner so it'll go into the right coding system. And then you can start, this is what the block system would look like with the uh, bit. And this is, this is why I say that it just kind of like a clearly labeled system. So you just click the blocks together and then it will, you would connect the robot to the system or download this program to the robot itself. And then it will do it. Yeah. And the fun thing about this one is that this is the system that you would use to connect it to an actual physical robot, but Ozoblockly also has a virtual robot. So you can use the Ozobot simulator when you're doing your training before you even get your robot. And you can use this to move your virtual robot to practice before you move your physical robot. So this is our virtual simulator on the right-hand side. Then you go into the movement section and you can say move forward about one step going fast. And then you can say, take a right turn and then we'll just make them go in a square.
I'm not actually describing this because I don't want this to be a tutorial, just a demonstration. Otherwise, that would be a horrible silent tutorial. <laughs> <laughs> but then I'll just do run. And I'll duplicate it and make them close off the square. To make it more obvious, I'll actually make them go five steps so you can get a full square. Reset and run. Nice. Yeah. And so this is just kind of a good way to have some fun with it and get used to it. And then you can also make them change colors the same way that you would with a real robot. And so this is something that you can expect with like the drag and drop system with any one of these kits. It basically works in the same way. You drag a block over, snap it together, and go. And let me go back in here. Um, snap circuits is another one that most people have either heard of, used, or have a smaller version themselves. I got the Snap Circuit Extreme, so it has more bits and bobs to it, and it also has three or four different pre-printed um, pre class packs and a curriculum guide that's included directly with the kit. And there's also an extension activity so that you can use this uh, Snap Circuit kit connected directly to a computer and start doing coding on the computer. And so I've got a little over 10 minutes left. So I'm just going to give you a rundown of what's happening with these virtual reality kits, just in case you haven't been keeping up with the updates. So the Oculus Go is they are no longer supporting Oculus Go. They have traded it out completely in support of um, Oculus Quest. Mm -hmm. So Oculus Go, um, I believe it's supported up through this year. Don't quote me on that, but I'm pretty sure it's this year. And then they're gonna stop doing the um, security updates, stop doing any app updates. Um, you can no longer actually make the apps for the Go anymore. They only support apps for Quest or Rift or Quest 2. And you can still get apps for Go, but you just can't, they're not making any more. The new ones. Yeah. And I haven't added, I do have, as you, you might remember from the slideshow, I do have the Quest 2. Um, I'm including the Quest 2 but I'm still waiting for a couple more Quest 2 to show up in the mail. Um, I'm not sure where they actually landed, but they got returned to sender, so they have to send them again. And so I will be getting more of the Quest 2, and I'll be keeping the Oculus Quest just in case some libraries want to test out the Quest instead of Quest 2. Um, the benefit of using Quest instead of Quest 2 is Quest 2 requires you to connect the headset through a Facebook account, but Quest will let you sign up using an Oculus account, which can be connected over to like a Gmail or your regular email account. So some people don't want to get involved or require a Facebook um, usage using the library Facebook, so they just prefer the Quest. So I'm keeping both of them as an option. It doesn't have that requirement now. Yeah. That was something that was holding some people back, I know. Some libraries, I mean. And I'm hoping that Facebook kind of gets the message and starts giving the option to use their Oculus app. But because, I mean, they already built it, they have it. But all right. And so the last one I'll touch on is the Google Nest Hub set because some like more people are wanting to experiment with um, smart homes yep. so and connected devices like that. So this one has the uh, a set of smart bulbs so you can make them change color, you can set them on a timer, you can um, voice activate it so that you can turn on your 
living room lights or you can voice at it to turn on library lights. You can, if you forget to turn off the lights in the upstairs room of the library, you can actually use an app on your phone to turn off your lights instead of trekking all the way upstairs. Um, you can even do it from home if you had wanted to, just using that app. And there are also smart plugs that are available so that you can, it's basically an on off switch for anything that has a regular plug in. So you can use it for a regular lamp that doesn't have a smart bulb. Um, I've used it for my air conditioner so that I can turn on and off my air conditioner before I get home. And you can, there are security cameras, there are, and I've also included the smart doorbell um one thing i'd love for library like some libraries to test out if you're curious about it is to keep the smart doorbell on the at the front desk and if you happen to be shelving or helping someone else out on the floor and if you're a solo librarian or just short on staff you can have someone ring the doorbell and then you can answer the doorbell using your smartphone or a different screen just from anywhere in the library and you can either answer the question right from there or just let them know that you're going to be heading on up or to have them meet you at a different part in the library. Nice. That is a slick, that is very slick, yes, for solo librarian, solo staff, absolutely. Right. And you can also put the doorbell outside in the traditional sense. So if you have like a delivery person coming up, you can have them ring the doorbell and then you can just visually let them know that you're there on the way. Um, this is also great if you have a mobility impairment because sometimes it can take you longer to get to the door than it would normally and sometimes delivery people or visitors leave before you're actually able to get there. So the smart doorbell is a good option to be able to notify them that you're on the way but it's going to take you a second. Or if you're just super busy and stuck in the back or stuck helping someone and can't get to the door yet. So, and there's also a variety of other different ways to, that you can use this. And you can also use this to introduce the idea of smart home technologies, smart gadgets, smart manufacturing, warehouses, mm -hmm. um, automation. And I've also got some lesson plans available to help kind of run through the basics of what automation is, what it's doing, and how you can use it. And of course, the handy dandy real world problems. All right, so let me pop into the policy section here. So, and I need to give myself a note to self to change the background color of this because I must have forgotten to do that. You can still read it though, I'll live. So if you want to, um, a pre, like a preview of what the virtual reality waiver looks like, that is available on this policy section over here. And it's basically just kind of, and this is something that is recommended to actually talk people through just so that they acknowledge and understand what they could be getting into. And it's also a liability and safety thing for the library. So people can't come back and say, how can you give me this technology? And it made me nauseous. And what are you doing to people? And how dare you? And unfortunately it's happened before. That's why it's here. Yeah. And so this is available for you. And then there are the policies in here that say how long this is actually going to be checked out. You get to check them out for 30 days at a time. And there's a, a little blurb in here about if you get that like damaged or missing pieces, and so it'll talk about the replacement fees and there's a $5 processing fee for um, doing missing pieces. Um, there's also options that you can talk about um, replacement pieces. And I mean, basically there's options. There's more than one way to go about this and we're still kind of working it through. Sure, but, it's like an experiment, so yeah. Um, and we'll work with you on, you know, okay, what happened? Let's figure it out. Let's, yeah. yeah. And basically, nine times out of ten, it is not the end of the world. 
Now you have already, I know we're kind of today doing a, here's this new program we're doing, but you've already been lending some of these out, correct? I mean, this is, yeah. yeah. some of us have already done, gone through, done, you know, done this. Yeah, and actually um, there was just a news article about Gearing Library using some of these kits. Yeah. And I think that was in the Star Herald, if I remember right. Um, let me open it up on my. Yeah, it was in the Star Herald. Um, Gearing Library hosts STEM project with high ability learners, and they gave a shout out to the Library Commission for the tech kits. <laughs> And so if you want to learn more about what's available in the kits and kind of start accessing the policies, find more information about what all these tech kits are representing and how they are being used out in the wide, wide world. And if you want to find more extended activities if people really want to dig deeper into the technology itself, there are also further activities in this high tech section that show I'm curious about Internet of Things. I don't have a tech kit, but I can still go online or go get my own different app or what have you and start practicing with it myself. Um, we do have a question about the um, checking out the kits. You had mentioned earlier um, that there will, I think for each one, there will be the ultimate goal is that we'll have 15 kits to loan out of, of mm -hmm. each of everything. Um, how many uh, how many kids can someone or, um, request? Do they have to say I want all 15 or do they say I only want to get five? Do they Are they split up? How does that work? Oh, you can only get five if you want to. So okay. you can get so five, you can get, them. yeah. And I'm still working on like a calendar of availability, but so I'm still kind of formatting it in the sheet. But eventually, when I actually have time on the planet, there'll be a calendar of availability that says which kits are available and when. Oh, so people will be able to come to the site and see if something is already out that they can't get it yet. They may, they'll know when it's back. And uh, oh, another question, just because this is just like lending, you know, Internet of Things and lending books, lending anything. Are renewals allowed on these? <laughs> like and. Oh. So that'll depend on whether the kit is already reserved by a different library after it. Sure, sure. So if it, and that's kind of the usual policy is if it's on reserve, no. But if they're, I mean, if no one wants it, then yeah, go to town. Extend your time if you want. Yeah. And and that'll actually be more. It'll be easier to request renewals after that a calendar of availability is open. Mm -hmm. which I suppose is something I should add sooner than later, but <laughs> all in good time. Right now, they just put a request in and then you'll let them know if if it's available. Yep, yeah. Or when it will and, be available, I guess, yeah. Yeah. And so, and this, in the request kit form, it'll just ask you your, I mean, it's basic library information, where are we sending it, Who who are you? And this is only available to Nebraska libraries, so I've learned the hard way that I need to specify that. And so then we'll go, you'll choose the kit that you actually want right now. Um, the Oculus Quest 2 is not yet available in this list, and that's just because it's something weird happened with mailing and return to sender. You'll get it when I get it. <laughs> And so the, I'll also be updating the quantities as I get the new kits in. Um, some of them, so these are the, the quantities that are available as of today, but these are all going to get boosted up to, mostly all of them are going to get boosted up to a quantity of 15. The exception is the Google Nest Smart Home because these are not traditionally used in K through 12 schools. So I didn't see the need of getting 15 of them because, I mean, unless I can show that 15 of them are probably going to get checked out, it's not really worth getting yet. Mm. But if it gets a ton of use, I'll get more. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, see how the, you know, the demand is, supply and demand. And the other exception will be the Snap Circuit Extreme, just because 
it costs more to mail it back and forth because it is, because it is the largest, heaviest kit. Mm -hmm. And so if there is a large demand for it and people are willing to um, do the shipping back and forth because it's free to receive it, but you only have to pay return shipping. So that's another thing that is a good thing to know for budgeting, planning, what have you. Mm -hmm. And most of these are actually pretty cheap to send back and forth, but the snap circuits I found have, mm -hmm. yeah. And this is just the heaviest, bulkiest one that is available right now. Mm -hmm. But the other one's way lighter, way cheaper. You can get 15 of them and it's way cheaper to send it back and forth. So those are my two exceptions. And you said these are for Nebraska libraries, but you mentioned schools. Is this for, so which type of Nebraska libraries can order these? So public, academics, K-12s, what are the rules about that? So public, academic, and school libraries can check them out. If you are a prison library, you actually can check them out, but the rules and regulations for prison libraries make it really difficult to bring in any of this type of equipment. Um, most prison library, and I just found this out during the um, NLA conference recently because some prison libraries walked up and said, oh, cool, this would be kind of fun. And then they said, our policies will never let us do it. Oh. And, you know, oh. So I guess, nearly any type of library policy permitting and that'll be more your policy and then this one that's on theirs not on our side we're happy yeah. to send it to any library if you are able to accept it yeah okay cool and so you'll be asked your first choice and second choice when you need it by and you can also add in any notes so you can say i'd like it by this time but if you don't and you can add in a note that says, if you don't have it till later, just let me know when you can send it and we're good to go. Mm -hmm. And then I'll just shoot you out an email saying when you'll get it and which one you're getting. And then ask any questions if I need to and we'll be good to go. That'd be also where you could say, I don't want all 15, I just want however many. Yeah, and there should also, if there's not already, there should be a how many copies do you want? Um, I'll be adding, apparently I missed that. So I'll be adding in a how many copies do you want? So that'll actually just be a little drop down menu that says how many you need. Okay. That was on the old form, but this is the revamped form that's easier to fill out. Mm -hmm. And do we have any questions about kits that are available, activities. Um, if anyone wants me to help them customize some makerspace activities to their community, um, I've been doing that quite a bit. And I will put up my email address if you have any questions. Um, yeah, if anybody does, we're a little after 11 o'clock, but we started a little bit after 10, so that's no problem. Um, if anybody does have any um, anything you want to ask right now, get it into the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface if you want to ask, desperately ask Amanda at something now. But you can always, yes, reach out to her here. Um, our emails amanda.sweet at nebraska.gov. And I am also putting this into the slideshow. There it is. And I'll put this into the chat. But it should also be available on the Encompass Archives website in case you miss it now. Yes, it will. And I will put in my email there get the link to the slides for myself so that I have them for when I do my... And I will also put in the link to the actual main page of the tech kits. 
that's also available on the session page for today's show. Uh, if people looked at the um, show description. Change the color. Background will be a sporty purple. <laughs> there we go. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> uh, there will be any other questions that come in. Just a thank you for the information. Um, this is great. So yeah, should hopefully get more requests for the kit coming soon. Perfect. Other than that, that's all I've got for you. And I'm about to go make another cup of coffee. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so I'm going to pull presenter control back to my screen so I can wrap up our show for today. Thank you so much. Let me see if I get this right. There we go. Uh, there it is. Um, and there's the I was looking at the tech kit, obviously. Um, thank you so much, Amanda, for um, talking to us about the tech kit today. I'm glad we finally have this been a work in progress over the last year or so or more. Yeah. I think. Before the world ended. Before, yes. Pre-pandemic is when this was started and it was going to be, let's do this and then everything shut down. <laughs> um, yeah. so I'm glad we finally got this. Um, I forget some of the teams worked out of it, getting out there to everyone. So please do get on their website, request these tech kits for your library. Um, and I've got, as you said, I've got the link here to the slides that will be available <clears throat> when I get the recording up as well. So. Um, and here is the description of today's show. As you can see, that there's a link right here that does go to the Tech Kids page right from there as well. So um, that will wrap up to, for today. Um, I don't know, well, the recording will be here. This is our main Encompass Live website. And see, I've got my upcoming shows listed here. And uh, archive link is here at the bottom, right underneath the list. And today's show will be at the top of the page here. Um, it'll have a link to the recording on our YouTube channel and the slides on um, the Google Slides that Amanda used today. Everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show will get an email from me letting you know when the recording is ready and available. It uh, should be before the end of the day tomorrow, as long as GoToWebinar and YouTube cooperate with me. Um, I'll also show you here, we do a search feature in our archives if you want to look for any other um, previous show topics and see if um, we've done something on a topic you're interested in. You can ensure search the full show archives or just limit it to the most recent 12 months if you want something totally current, just current. Um, that is because this is our full show archives and I'm not going to go all the way down to the bottom. It's a long, long list. Um, going back to the original start of Encompass Live, which was in January 2009. So we have 11, 12 years worth of archives here. Um, so just pay attention when you are watching a show to the original broadcast date. Uh, Sometimes some many of our shows will stand the test of time and be still good valid information, but some things will become old, outdated, information will no longer be correct, links might not work anymore, services may have changed drastically or no longer exist. Uh, but we are librarians and this is one thing we do is archive and keep things for historical purposes. Uh, we also have a Facebook page. I've got it linked off of our main page, but here's our Facebook page. If you um, like to use Facebook, give us a like over there. We post reminders. Here's a reminder to log in today's show, information about our speakers, when our previous recordings are available. So we do keep up with everything there. We also post onto Twitter and Instagram. We have a hashtag EncompLive, a little abbreviation that we use. So you can look for that elsewhere. So that will wrap it up for today's show. As you can see, I've started getting um, shows in here on our calendar for November and December. Um, there are some blank dates that are here. I'm still confirming things, but they will be filled in. I've even already gotten into next year. Oh my gosh. Um, <laughs> Where did it go? <laughs> it's there, yeah. Uh, anyway, next month, our first show of November will be um, next week, also, Letters About Literature, our state reading and writing competition. Um, so please do, if you'd like to participate or have the um, young people in your library or school participate in this, uh, sign up to hear all about how to run that program and sign up for any of our other upcoming shows and keep an eye out for as I add in and fill in all the empty dates. Thank you everybody for being here. Thank you, Amanda. 
and we will see you back at the end of November. Do you have any thoughts on what that will be is there at all or still thinking about it? Hmm. Still thinking about it a little bit. We'll see. So keep an eye on that pretty sweet tech November 24th and then we'll be back and we'll see what her topic will be. All right. Thank you so much, everyone. And we'll see you on a future episode of Uncoupled Live. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye. <laughs>